thinking, obviously, uh, but we also uh, look back uh, the match like we always do. Uh, and, uh, back uh, and, uh, the mistakes we made, uh, we, uh, we pay for them. Um, the team uh, had also yesterday a uh, lot of in the end, but we produced a lot. choices that you've made were influenced by players, by agents, and that um, you didn't bring the best players to the competition. I don't know if you've listened to the voice notes. If you have, how would you react to this? No, I don't have to react on, on, on voice notes of anybody. Uh, I think that the one thing I've shown uh, from day one is that I'm very independent on, on my choices. And, uh, I've not been even interested in uh, knowing what kind of connection there are. I don't have a relationship with agents, uh, even if agents have called me. But uh, probably one of the agents that I have best relationship with, I left his player home. So, <laughs> uh, that, that, uh, I can understand disappointments uh, from players, but I hope that uh, they will think twice, because they don't do anything for me. It's more towards their, their uh, teammates. If they have said these things, uh, which is also something we need to verify. Uh, there's a great team spirit uh, from we started in Madrid. Uh, it continued to Doha. It continued uh, here in Egypt. And unfortunately now, uh, you know, we had this result that is not favorable. Uh, and then obviously some people will take advantage to start uh, finding all kinds of excuses. Uh, and try to create uh, problems, and I hope, uh, uh, I hope uh, the players, the group, will stay united in these things and will uh, continue to protect what they do. Because when I came as a coach, this is exactly what I found: a lot of issues, a lot of problematics from from before, and we cleaned it up, and we uh, cleaned it up by show all the players that they were important by changing the captain band to, with all the leaders that we have inside, by uh, using uh, almost all players in all the matches because we could, because we were qualified until the last match, so everybody felt involved. And so I mean, uh, if, uh, if it's true that uh, some things have been said, it's just a sign of uh, immaturity and it says much more about these, uh, these, uh, these players or the people that are around them than about us and, and this group. Coach, now uh, we're in the way forward now. So what is the way forward? What are the plans? 
Uh, are you planning on looking out on uh, younger players from the local championship, try to scout for other players? Uh, what is the plan? What do you plan ahead now for the team? Uh, I mean, I think that uh, we all, like you guys, have uh, had a long, uh, long uh, journey. Uh, we wish it would be uh, longer, uh, but uh, it's, it's a good moment to reflect now and to to, uh, to reflect and and, uh, and then start planning uh, for the future. Uh, I think that is something that uh, the president of Africa Food will, uh, will start doing and uh, is doing already with uh, the organization. Uh, but uh, the players have had a long season. We have had a very intense uh, journey until now. So I think the first thing is to, to, to just relax a little bit and reflect. Coach, in here again. Um, 2021, Cameroon will be hosting the Africa Cup of Nations. Uh, next year in January, um, Cameroon will host the African Nations Championship. That's for the home-based players. Are you already thinking about the 2021 edition? And are you hoping to tap from the team that we've got in 2020 in Shan for the 2021 uh, AFCON? Well, um, uh, as I said before, I think that uh, after you know a loss uh, with a disappointment and uh, all the emotions are going on, for everybody, for, for us, for the players, for the, for the staff, for the people, uh, for Fekka Food, for, for, for the country at all. Um, it's good to just uh, have a moment of reflection and, and just let sink everything down. And, um, things for Cameroon won't change. I said it, uh, I would have never signed uh, with, uh, with Fekka Food if I didn't believe in, in what could be achieved and the development of football in Cameroon to, to be a part of that and to make a contribution. Um, unfortunately, uh, in football, it's you know, not possible uh, to, to uh, look too far ahead <clears throat> because there are always important um, uh, appointments like we are now set already in 21, there's already AFCON and then turn your head around and then you're already qualification for the World Cup. Uh, so we know how that goes in football, but uh, what I am proud of is that uh, uh, we have done a lot of uh, work uh, also off the pitch uh, that hopefully will, uh, will continue uh, with, or, with or without us uh, in the right direction in terms of organization, professionality, in terms of uh, you know, work, work ethic. We came, I remember a lot of criticism about that the Lions were not uh, showing the fighting spirit anymore and I think that also that we have seen again uh, with this team that would never give up until the last minute of the match, even yesterday, so um, a lot of positive things that, uh, that hopefully will continue and um, as you said, uh, there will be time to, to, to then go back into detail and, and look into how the future can be uh, continue to build uh, for, for a generation that is coming, which is also very, very interesting. Coach, if you, if you want to look back, every person at one point has a regret. What would you say uh, would be your greatest regret of the tournament up to this moment? Well, one regret is that, uh, that uh, I think that CAF um, didn't give us the opportunity to have uh, another player. I think that was uh, a mistake, uh, a fair play mistake in my opinion, uh, because uh, a player that cannot, uh, is at risk to die on the field uh, is an injured player. So I mean the interpretation of that for me was is still on the field. Uh, I know that they are thinking about changing uh, and, and describing that rule uh, better. That, that probably is the biggest thing because uh, all the other stuff, you know, um, I think that uh, the group has, has really worked well. Uh, they work with discipline, they work with uh, desire, uh, they work with focus. Um, I think from the staff point of view, we have uh, tried to create the best conditions for them and prepare the matches as good as possible. We have been growing in the group stages uh, every match and then uh, obviously when you get in the knockout stages uh, that's the day that you need to perform and I think that 
uh, we performed uh, offensively uh, much better, but we didn't perform defensively like we had done in the, all, all the other matches, and, and we paid the price for that. Coach, uh, if there was that was your first AFCON as a, as a coach, uh, what would you keep in mind? What will, will be one memory that you will keep with you for this discovery of the AFCON? Well, everything, everything uh, from the enthusiasm of the people, the volunteers. Uh, it's been really wonderful to see all these people, uh, you know, uh, working so hard uh, to to help us have uh, great conditions. Um, commitment of the players to their, their, their country, to Africa, uh, wonderful, wonderful to see uh, the growth of the smaller countries as well, uh, Benin is an example of that, uh, which is meaning that, uh, that football is growing in, in Africa, the tactics and the technical aspects are growing for all the countries, so it's even more competitive, it's already competitive, even more competitive. Yes, overall, uh, a positive experience. Uh, I would not, and I've never done in my life, to just relate things to results because um, in sports only one can win. Uh, but we have shown to be competitive, and we have shown also against Nigeria to have competed. And uh, for me, that is what what sport is about: to compete and uh, to never give up and to fight for the victory uh, from first to last minute. Thank <laughs> you.